Welcome, everybody. Um, so great. We're here. Awesome. I was warming up the room. I, I, it was perfect. It was okay. great. A so, lot of teasers in there. So far, I've asked them, why are you here? What's, a, what's the definition of victory for you in this session? Perfect. Nobody has said anything that we're not already prepared to do. Good. Because <laughs> that would be rough. <laughs> yeah. So who one, brought, of, one of the three. Who of brought us. a resume? Sick. Okay. Gotcha. I brought volunteers. So, well, <laughs> that was the joy of, <laughs> I was hoping I would get in early enough to drag all of you guys here. So, um, welcome to resume writing. Are we out on zoom? Are we good to go? Awesome. And you got me for questions from the virtual guys. Uh, okay. Are we going to get there or are they going to be on Slack or is that a thing? Okay, I thought it was going out on Slack too. No worries. If you got questions, ask them on Discord and uh, we'll bring them up. But let's get... Uh, I've been sitting say, a lot. I want to stand. Yeah, are, are you guys cool with us standing up here? It's going to feel a little weird with all three of us standing. But So your panelists... Come on in. Come on in. So I'm Josh Mason. Um, you might not know me and that's perfectly fine. So... Uh, my background, I was a C-130 pilot and then a cyber warfare officer in the Air Force. I got out and taught at the Defense Cyber Crime Center Cyber Training Academy, taught some DFER, some uh, an uh, analyst stuff, as well as cyber threat emulation. That I really dug into there and uh, learned enough to teach the uh, penetration testing student course, built that out version two for INE eLearn Security. And that went live back in the spring, as well as worked with uh, Alexi Ahmed Hackersploit in building out the EJPT version two, which I think is coming out of beta soon. So yay. Um, and then I jumped over to SimSpace to become a sales engineer. And wait a minute, you told me you were the VP of channel. I'm partner. working on this. Okay, so yeah. <laughs> trying. Your trust. Bro, he's Dude, working on his resume had to too. Start. <laughs> <laughs> Did I? I said, were you waiting? You want to go together? He said, yeah. And then, and then I was coming off demo mode. You got to like, give me a second. <laughs> Gerald Dozier. So that's me. Um, Kip, yeah, I know you gave a little introduction to yourself. Do you want to? Yeah, just a, just a quick recap. I don't have three mics. Or I only have three mics. Sorry, Jerry. <laughs> so Take just a just a quick recap. Uh, I've been I've been building teams uh, in the infosec cybersecurity space for over twenty years. And, and I've been helping people write resumes and get ready to uh, either get promoted or to cross into cybersecurity from some other industry, right? And helping them identify their transferable skills and try to figure out what's a reasonable job for them to go for. Um, and I've been doing that for a long time. So, um, and I've got the podcast and, uh, and a resume template that I can share with you. And so I, my vision for you is that you'll be an absolutely irresistible candidate as you go through the hiring process, and I'm happy to help you. So, you got a question? Yeah, yes. we'll share it afterwards. Yes. Frank? Hi, uh, I'm Frank. I've got a lot of experience as a, you know, in DFIR and pen testing, et cetera, IT. I also spend a lot of time teaching at universities and uh, doing a lot of mentorships as well. So, I'll help people through their careers. I'll sell start talking to them. The biggest thing I like to see in resume is to make it impactful. You can sit there and list all these skills. Like for example, I was telling to someone earlier, <clears throat> they had given me a list and said, we had finished 20 try hack me challenges. As a manager, I'm looking at it and saying, so what, who cares? What does that bring to me? What does that challenge? It would be better. I mean, it's not bad to list those challenges, but if you sit there and you say, I learned in this one challenge and this is how I can apply it, that's going to be impactful for what we do. So there's Kip and Frank, Jerry and Matt and a lot of the guys who, uh, who we all know from the community have helped me get to where I am. And so uh, one of my buddies, Stefan Selmaroth, when I was getting out of the Air Force, he gave me a bunch of help. And the only thing he requested out of me was that I pay it forward. And so I've been trying just to do that since uh, that point. So I share things on LinkedIn and I've done some stuff on streams and help put together this. And uh, that's what I wanted to do here. So that's us. Um, the goal of today, and you've heard it, is to help you guys know how to write resumes so that you can get to an interview. 
the purpose of a resume, correct me if I'm wrong, mm-hmm. is to get to an interview. And that's it. It's not to tell your life story. It's not to highlight the best project you ever worked on 15 years ago. It's very difficult. You know, your ego wants people to know all the stuff that you've done. Hey, I, I've had that. I've had to fight that also, right? I want everybody to know I've done this. I've done this. this, this. I was a Novell Netware master, right? But nobody cares about that anymore. So you have to, and what we're going to teach you is we're going to teach you how to take your resume and hone it so that it matches the job description and captures the attention of the hiring manager and gets you the interview. That's all it does. So there's a process that goes with getting a job. Often it's, if you're lucky and you make some contacts, which is what I highly suggest. It's why we've got great people in the room because I've uh, reached out and I asked them to be here. Um, But uh, if you get the opportunity to talk to a hiring manager and have that relationship and say, Hey, I want this role. And they, you, you know, fast forward to that interview process. Awesome. Do that for everything else. What is the normal process, Kip? Well, you're having to uh, scale the black gates of Mordor, also known as the applicant tracking system. So, yeah, how do you get past those things? What are some of those phrases? But also don't use those stupid little tricks. Like don't take the job description and put it in your resume. That's, that, will, that will be discovered and that will get you rejected and, and possibly blacklisted. There's a version of that, but yeah, what he's talking about, some people have mentioned this, you like, copy the exact job description. You put it as like either clear or white font on the white background at like zero font or uh, size one type. And that's uh, yeah. People don't like that. The ATS is uh, see that and they yeah. bounce you the ways that you want to work that job description into your resume. We will cover, but there's a proper and an impactful yep. and a catch attention way of doing it. But generally you're going to find LinkedIn or monster or the company's website, and there's going to be an application. You fill out the application, you upload your resume, and it's going to go through an applicant tracking system like Bamboo or... It doesn't there's, matter. There's a, there, are, there are so many, yeah. we couldn't name them all. Yeah. And some very large companies like Google and AWS, they have their own ATS that they built from scratch. So you, I mean, it's, it's completely opaque. We have no idea from the outside. You know, you, There's no way to buy it and, and black box test it to figure out how it works. Um, I've... Fortunately, my buddy, Stefan Selmaroth, he was a recruiter for a while. And so he grabbed a bunch of ATSs and worked with some, uh, some of his clients, the, you know, hiring companies that had ATSs and tried, uh, uh, sending in different resumes to see how did the ATS actually ingest and use what they, uh, you know, what he input. So I've got some tips on like the best way to not get your, uh, resume, like completely screwed yeah. up yeah, yeah. by that ATS. Yeah. And there's ATS simulators that you can access as well. So one that I like, although there are many, and I'm not not telling you like this is the one, I'm not an affiliate for this, but it's jobscan.co. So you could start there. I find their website very helpful. I think they have a lot of really good information on there. And what they'll let you do is uh, upload your resume and then they'll uh, use their simulator to analyze it. And then they'll tell you, you know, if you have any issues and, you know, and that can help. The other thing that I want to say right off the bat is if you think you're going to write one do-it-all resume, that's not going to work. You're, you're just like tying your wrist to your ankle. I understand that it takes work to customize your resume for every job that you want to apply for, um, but that's, that's what you have to do. It's a job to get a job, all right? Yeah. You can and apply to 200 places and get zero interviews, or you could put in the work and apply to a couple places and hopefully get interviews and Yeah, I'd rather see you apply to 20 places and actually get some actual interest than 200 and get bupkis. Yeah. Yeah, And you you have to sit there and wonder, it's like, why, you know, if you're not willing to put the effort in, that shows. I mean, that that shows to an employer as well. If you're not going to worry, sit there and put that resume in and say, hey, I want this job and put that effort into your resume. Why would I even bother reading it? This is the first product that you're hiring, that you're future managers yeah. ask from you, yeah. like how much effort did it's you put into it? It's your first work product. Because if, if I'm looking at your resume and I have never even met you, but I'm looking at your resume and I'm like, typos? Spelled HIPAA wrong? Next. Yeah, if this is how he cares about getting paid and having a job and his own life and his own career, like 
What's he going to care about the projects that I give him? Mm-hmm. And I... So some hints and tips, make your resume machine readable. So just the few lines that I've actually got in this side deck, tables suck. Simple formatting is key. So like columns, avoid columns, bullets, things in line, things that a text reader and like simple fonts, but the boring fonts, you're not trying to wow the them stuff. with your GUI uh, skills. Unless you're a web developer and you're handing this resume to someone and being like, I am an artist and you want to hire an artist. Cool. Everyone else, <laughs> simple, machine readable, straightforward, the basics. I mean, ASCII, really, right? I mean, yeah. that's the best. Think about the hiring manager. I mean, the reason why you're, they're hiring people is because they don't have time to do the job. How much time do they think, do you think, will they take to actually try to read your resume? Right. And if you make it too complex for them, if you overload them, they're not going to read it. I mean, think about it when someone sits there and hands you a 500 page book. The first thing you're not, you know, you're not going to read the entire thing. Yeah. And you don't get a chance to do a, a TLDR on a resume either, mm-hmm. right? So that's not a valid hack. But what you need to do is you need to write your resume like a newspaper article. So who can tell me what is it about a newspaper article and why do you think I'm suggesting that? Yeah. Bottom line up top, right? Because there's a headline. It's a hook. It's a grabber, right? Think about when you read news, right? You scan the headlines. Headlines that kind of grab you, you read the first paragraph. And if the first paragraph grabs you, then you read the next one. And you read the next one until you fuzz out and then you go on. And that's exactly what hiring managers do with resumes. We scan across the top. If we see something we like, we'll keep looking. If we don't, we'll move on. So with that, have something that catches. And headlines are useful. So putting up front, what is it that you do? And if what you do is prospective security something, like what do you, what's your take on like prospective or uh, introductory or student yeah. in like a so, title or in yeah in the so summary. like if i'm applying for a job that i've never had before but i've got lots of great transferable skills right then then i might say aspiring cybersecurity analyst right and there's a couple of reasons why i want to do that number one is i want to uh, i want to say to the hiring manager like i understand you're trying to hire a cybersecurity analyst but i also want you to know at this point that i have not had that job before however if you keep reading you're going to see that i have all these transferable skills which is actually going to make me qualify for this position, right? So, um, and there's a, an ATS benefit because if you can get the job description into your resume, that's going to be a keyword hit and you're more likely to get seen. Yeah. Yeah. Spend that time really, really reading the job. I mean, I, I've seen so many people where they're, they come in for an interview and they don't even know what the job is for. They don't even have those skills. Now, granted, we do have a lot of HR people that get into the job descriptions and they do kind of some weird things with trying to look for that unicorn, but at least know what the job is about. Yeah. Like and what's the essence it. of the job? Yeah. What mm-hmm. is the essence? What are we trying to accomplish? Know what the resume is. And, you know, my own personal feeling is it's not a bad idea to have a copy of the job description in front of you. A lot of times I had a student sit there and ask me, you know, you can't take notes into your interview. I'm like, why not? Yeah, you can. I do it all the time. And in fact, I will detract from people that don't bring in a notebook, that don't bring in something. Right. Good. Yeah. And I, it's something I was planning on covering tomorrow. But yeah, you, even in, if you're not reading something, you want to take notes on what yeah. people are asking you, especially if like you're telling a story and you might want to come back and point to it later. Or it sounds like they're like interested in something and you want to write yourself a note in their interview. Like they care about this thing. Like I want to make sure that I continue to cover that later. Can I throw in a few things? Sure. Manager? Yeah. So typically for like, so like my last job that I posted got about 190 applicants. Now, who thinks I read 190 resumes? <laughs> no way. Right. It's, it's just impossible. Now I do have access to all the same stuff that HR uses. Because I, you know, poke them and ask for it, uh, because I, you know, I come to these things and you know learn all of the downfalls of some of the ADS systems and stuff like that. And I was like, I'm probably losing valuable candidates. But for the posts that I do look at, you know, out of the out of our application system, it's two minutes or less that I will spend on your resume. And the more interested in you I am, the longer I spend. And if I'm really interested, then I go look for you on like LinkedIn as well, just to see you know what else you have out there. But um, what's the other thing I want? 
if I could repeat for the people who are at home. So uh, what's your name? Aaron. Aaron here is a hiring manager. And he said uh, last job you put out, you had 109 applicants, 190 applicants. And so for those resumes that you did end up looking at, you spent on an average about two minutes looking at them. And you're saying from your experience, even like you, the ones that didn't catch your attention early, like you didn't spend more time on the ones that did catch your attention that hooked you, you continued to read, you read the whole thing. And maybe you went out and you looked up information about them on their own. And you didn't even look at all 190. (laughs) That's the ones that made it to your desk after processing. And we got a question up here, but yeah. Yep. Oh, uh, just want to know. So I take notes on my phone a lot. Yeah. I I don't know. This is what I do. I bring up my note, my note taking app on my, on my phone and I show it and I say, just so you know, I'm taking some notes right now. I'm not browsing Facebook. Or even, do you mind if you take some notes during this? I like that. Call, call, yeah. Call it out. Let them know that you're not just sitting there looking at Instagram or whatever. (laughs) But if you're, if you're unsure, if you think that's going to be too awkward, like no one's going to fault you and they might give you kudos if you bring a pen and paper yeah. to the interview. And if that's not your normal thing, like your notes might be chicken scratch and they might not persist long term. <clears throat> you might eventually put them in your, your thing. But for that interview, it might be useful just to get out of your like normal comfort zone and write things down. Um, and if you are doing a virtual interview in that case and they mm. can't see you, let them know that you are taking notes. Same thing, whether it's on paper or on your phone. So they, if you are looking down, they know that you're not just disinterested. Yeah. Oh, the other thing I was going to say about notes, the, uh, I've been in the past giving cues on what the next interview is going to be like in the process. So I was like, hey, I'm going to be asking some fairly detailed questions about you know, this framework or this regulation, you know, depending upon the, the job I'm looking for. And most of the time, the candidates will come back and he'll start asking them some of those detailed questions and they won't have gone out and done any reading or anything like that. One time, I, you know, somebody is like, oh, hold on a second, I've got some notes on that. That was the person I hired. I didn't even wait for the hands to be you know, like, I wasn't even caring about their answer anymore. I was like, you did the research, you brought notes. I was like, that's what I want. Somebody with some motivation to go out and figure some stuff out. That was basically the entire point of kept giving them the cue in the first place. Like if I give you something to look up, Right. Are you going to do that? Because who in cybersecurity has ever had to look up stuff for their job? Because <laughs> they have no idea what it is they were asked to do. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. So, so try to just, uh, cause we do have people at home. Yeah. Basically what Aaron was saying is that the notes benefit him in being able to sit there and he cares of the fact that you, you took enough time to sit there and take notes and reread the notes out there. Yeah. And we'll cover this again. I'll, I, I'm going to steal that for tomorrow's uh, interview section, but uh, he gives people uh information on what he's going to ask in follow-up interviews and expects them to go out and research those things so that then they can speak to them. And even if they're not an expert saying like pulling out their notes and being like, Oh, Hey, I, uh, I looked up this thing. And I mean, aren't you going to just do that every day on the job? Exactly. Mm-hmm. I mean, isn't that just exactly. what you're going to do? So, you That's know, basic that, blocking and tackling. Yeah. You know that the person's going to do the job, at least what you expect them to do on a daily basis. So, with this newspaper strategy, headline, and then a summary. What should your summary be like? Summary kind of says summarize. <laughs> so like, how long should it be? Yeah, I, I, I'm thinking two to three sentences, nice punchy sentences. And those sentences really need to be impactful, right? They need to really just come right out and tell me, who are you? What do you want? What's in it for me as the hiring manager, right? If you can do those things in that summary, then I'm going to be like, hell yeah, I'm reading the rest of this. Yep. Yeah, I think that's the important thing is that you got to remember that we're hiring for us, not for you. I mean, yeah, we want to benefit you in the job and a lot of the companies, but it's mostly as what are you going to do for me? What are you going to do to relieve my stress, right? And my workload? Because if I have to, if you're not doing that, but it's impactful and it's related to this job. Yep. So like, and this employer and this employer, my life story is long and varied and people <laughs> like might. Well, you can I'm, cover because yeah, I'm not saying to, to drop the jobs. Yeah. So the question is, is there another way to put those jobs in your resume? And I'm not telling you to drop those jobs, but what I am telling you to do, because you want to, you want to show a history, right? You want to show a nice history back 10 years. But what I'm saying is, is that that job isn't as relevant 
And so you're not going to fully explain everything about that job. You're just going to put a minimal amount of information in there to make that job understandable to me. But then the jobs that are super relevant, you're going to build those out a little bit more. And there's things in that job that like- If there's if transferable you said, things. If you said you were a, wait, a waiter or a waitress at a restaurant, like I don't need five bullet points explaining what you did. Like we all get it. Like same with if you say you were uh, like a Linux administrator, like I don't need to know- all of your daily tasks. What I want to know, okay, cool. You had a job and a title and here's the fun thing. No one is necessarily going to ask you to like pull up your paperwork from that like job and say like exactly what was your title <clears throat> according to HR, that position, like what did you do? And if it, if there's a way of presenting it properly, not lying, of course, because right. that's, that's mm -hmm. going to, that's not ever going to go well yeah, for you, don't lie. but explaining what you in that role that <clears throat> can apply here. And then you include the duties that either fit the job description or the things that kind of fit. And there's, there's, there's gray space in that job description where it might be like cybersecurity knowledge. So even if you were like, if you were a, a waiter or a waitress, like, was there something that applied there? Like, was there something in uh, your interactions with your uh, leadership or with customers? Hey, you handled credit cards. You That's handled a PCI card. thing. And yeah. But at least if you're doing that, uh, you know, and if not yes. list the item as a single item so that we know that you have that experience. Right. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. So what if you have, I'm thinking about space. If I want to keep my resume to one page and I have multiple roles within the same company, but now it's not as relevant and not, I'm not doing the same things anymore. How do I still include that, but not maybe take up so much space that now I'm losing the value of the space? So I'll say... I did seven years as a pilot in the Air Force. And in that time, I was a safety officer. I was a training officer. I was a tactics officer. I was a scheduling officer. I did, it was a mobility officer. And all of that, I don't put it all. And, and if I do another resume in like the next year, it's probably not even going to include that I was a pilot. It's just, I have the space. So I have one line, C-130 pilot for this many years. And I was a student pilot before that. And I had other jobs. Nobody gives a shit. Sorry. <clears throat> <laughs> so like, it's not relevant. If there is something relevant, like I worked on a web app, if that matters, or I was a safety officer. So like handling incidents because I got trained in like how to investigate a plane crash, investing in a plane crash since I've taught defer and I've uh, been certified as a aircraft mishap investigator, like they're actually very similar. Mm -hmm. So if I was going for a role where that would be applicable, I would highlight that, but no one else cares. So don't include it. Does that make sense? Like, it's cool. It's a fun story. I'll tell you about it later, but like, it's not gonna be on my resume. And a lot of people don't like that. Like, again, this goes back to a lot of people think the resume is, this is my life story. And my, like, I'm awesome. Like you should love everything about me. But again, what's the role of the resume? To get you to an the interview, interview for, for that, that job. job. So then education and training. That's the other fun thing. I have a bachelor's of science in humanities and an MBA and uh, a minor in Russian and a minor in philosophy. And guess what? No one really cares. Sometimes people care that like you've got like experience in things and that I went to school, uh, depending on like the jobs, if you're applying for like government contracts or GS jobs, maybe a, uh, a degree is a requirement. Uh, and we'll get into requirements in a little bit because requirements are like, eh, requirements. Um, if that's there, cool. Highlight that I've got it. And I've got the space in my resume currently that I can put that. And if it applies, I might even include a bullet if it applies to the job. What's your take? You've had a lot of students. You've taught at universities. I, well, what mostly they, they talk about is what certifications can we get? And certifications to me tell me a couple of things. One, that you are able to take a project and take it all the way through completion, right? That you can sit there and read a book, take a class and actually finish it. It also tells me, though, that unless I give you multiple choice, chances are you cannot complete a, a, a question. So um, when you're sitting there going through that education, it really is, is that how can you present? How can, again, make it impactful? How can you prove to me that you know what you're talking about? Yes, you have a certification for GPEN. You have a certification for ethical hacker. Great. How does that actually sit there? Can you tell me about it? You know, I don't want to sit there and ask you and then give you four choices about it. Right, you have to be able to bring it back mm -hmm. to me and tell me how you're going to be able to help me get the job done. And here's a place where you did 
Maybe you don't know how to try Hackme Rooms. Awesome. Are there any that apply to what you saw in this job description? Like if we're going to be using Splunk, like, hey, I did try Hackme Room in Splunk. I also did range for Splunk training. And I also did the like Splunk's actual training. And I've done Boss of the Sock V1, 2, and 3 when they came out. If I'm hiring you to be an analyst and I said in the job description that we're using Splunk, like I feel like that's valuable stuff to include. But like, okay, this person seems to be like, no, a little bit. I want to like, I want to talk to them and find out how Does much. anybody have a PhD? Anybody? Other than Jerry. Jerry's got a PhD. <laughs> okay. Here's, here's a great example of education and training. Mm. If you ever get a PhD, right? Jerry's already got one. And I don't know that you're ever going to apply for an actual job again. I don't know that you're, that you need to do that. But if you have a, a PhD, professor. unless the job requires a PhD, don't put it, don't tell anybody you have one. Okay. Cause I can, I can tell you right now that if I'm looking at resumes and the job that I am hiring for doesn't require a PhD, I'm not going to get excited about a candidate with a PhD. I'm just not. And I'm, and I'm not saying this because I'm trying to knock the value of, a, of that level of education. I'm not trying to knock it. I'm just trying to make the point that you've got to be very narrowly targeted what is relevant to this job and leave other things off of the resume, even though you're very proud of the fact that you got that PhD, it's a ton of work. You should be proud of it. You did a wonderful, cool thing. It doesn't belong on the resume. I actually read a resume with a guy with a PhD. And the first thing we saw is we can't afford him. And we put it down. We, we literally, and then the same thing with uh, somebody with like two master's degrees, same thing. We can't afford him. Why even bother reading it? And that guy got, got, got that person kicked out without even getting an interview. I've uh, actually had a buddy who I was like, oh, hey, can I come work for you guys? I see you have this role open. He's like, dude, Josh, you have an MBA and this B. Like, I can't hire you. Like, I, I know what I would expect with like those things because I have them as well. And I can't afford two of me. Like, a so lot of I the can't lessons, hire you. And a lot like, of, yes. Okay. And, and, and the corollary to what I just said is that a lot of the things you learned in school, like don't plagiarize, don't omit facts, things like that is completely working against you in this context, okay? So um, I am telling you to omit things if they're not relevant to the job that you're applying for, okay? And I'm also telling you to shamelessly plagiarize the heck out of job descriptions to get the keywords and get them into your, into your resume, right? You have to realize that, that job hunting is not school, all right? And don't get hung up on things that, that were pounded into you over years and years and years of school. They don't apply here. I actually like to call it a street fight. A street fight, yeah. Yeah, I mean, because that, you are not only trying to prove that you're the, you're trying to prove that you're better than the next person. You don't even know who that person is, All right? So you're going to use everything that you can to win that fight. Ethically. Ethically, <laughs> ethically, sorry. Ethically. Who's ever <laughs> shopped on <laughs> Amazon Prime? Who's, yeah. a, who's a Prime member? When you go out and you search for something on Amazon Prime, what are the chances that the first thing that pops up, you're like, that's exactly what I want, and I buy it? Like, or who goes and reads the descriptions and the reviews and the features and is like, okay, this, this is close. Is there another one that's better? Or is there another one that's better? And then like you decide, right? Right. Well, I'm an I'm analyzer. Not alone on that's this, how right? I do it. Right. Uh, I, I read like the first two sentences. And if I'm not interested, I move on to the next product. And I if, know Aaron said two minutes on a resume. I, I'll give it 30 seconds. A hiring manager is the same as you. They have a need and they're going to pay money to have that need filled. And they've spelled out exactly what they're looking for in the job description. So if we want to be, hey, I am the ideal candidate for you, let's take that job description and the things that we fit let's pull those and highlight those things. And if it doesn't fit, if it's not relevant, let's not detract. We don't want to like surprise, like later, like when we're um, at a conference together or we grab like at the offsite or we're in the office during coffee, like then I'll bring up like the other weird experiences and cool stuff that I've done. But if it doesn't apply right now, like let's bring that up in the interview. You're yeah. selling your ability to do this job to me. Yeah. If you don't think you're in sales, I'm sorry. But the more you embrace the fact that you are a professional who sells, I'm not calling you a sales professional. You're a professional who sells. The more you embrace that, the more likely it is that you're going to be irresistible to me. Yeah, and back to Kip's point, this is your first work product, right? If you're delivering a report to me, if I give you a task as a manager and you come back with all this extra data that I don't need, right? It's gonna, that, that also tells me a lot of stuff. Yeah. I'd, 
that shows me that you don't care about my time. I've only got, I've got 190 yeah. of these to start with. I got to find an ideal candidate and I still got to do my job. If you bring me something that doesn't apply, like obviously you don't care about my time. And if you don't care about my time now. And that's one of the reasons why we're so hung up on one page and two page resumes. Unless I ask you for a, a comprehensive resume that contains everything, which if you're applying for a job in academia, that may be uh, required. But unless you see that, then I only want one or two pages. You send me three, four pages. What I get from that is you're trying to make me do your work of finding out what's relevant in your four page resume. And I will not do that. Yeah. Now, there's a, a few things that I wonder about. And Kip, you've been a CISO before. You've held several security jobs. <clears throat> I know we've got at least one other CISO and some other, like, uh, I'll say, um, highly talented, older uh, professionals in here. If you're going for like a VP, SVP, CISO type role, does it change? Do you change from that one to two page? I mean, unless, the, unless I know that that employer wants to see more than one or two pages, it doesn't change for me. All right. And I would bet not too, in the sense that if you're looking at that level, you probably have a highly public figure space, at least to some extent, that people can do some of that research for this. So, like, yeah, if Chris Roberts is applying somewhere, you don't have a hard time figuring out. <clears throat> right. And I've also I've kind of learned that at that level, you're less hunting for positions, and people are more hunting for you. Would that be they, accurate? And if they want more detail, they can always ask for it. Yeah, they can always ask for more. But if you overwhelm them up front. It's going to give them that feeling of I'm drowning and I don't want to do this. I've gotten that. I've turned in a resume and the application and it fit what they were looking for. And then they came back with questions and email. Even before the interview, it was past the application, past getting them read my uh, my resume. And they said, oh, wait, have you done this? And have you done that? And it's like, yes, you didn't ask about it before. But yes, I have. I've done this or I've done it uh, a version of this or I know about it in this context. And those are things like they'll reach out if you hook them. And they're not sure that like they want to spend an hour on the phone with you or in person mm -hmm. with you. They'll reach out. Mm -hmm. So what I more. do is I have two copies of my resume. I have a short one. That's a one or two pages. And then I have the five, you know, the five pager that in case they happen to want it, I have that ready as well. Yeah. Right? And for your biography when they're yeah. ready to publish it. <laughs> yeah. When, when they want it. But like I said, I'm, I'm very bold, dull and boring. So <laughs> it's like four, you know, four pages is my entire life. Yeah. Go ahead. Oh, that's a great question. What's the difference between a CV and a resume? One's American and one's European. Yeah. <laughs> metric and... I don't know. Yeah, one's imperial, one's metric. I don't know. I'm just wondering if that was relevant. I mean, that's, that's one of those things in school. You know, they're like, the CV is the longer biography. Well, that, that's your Latin resume. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's all I know. Um, I... It seems like... Uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, we're, we're in South Dakota. Imagine a lot of us here <laughs> present are in North America, are from or working or live in North America. We might have people virtually who's all, who are all over the world. Um, some I, of this might not necessarily apply, but uh, there are differences. And I would say if we haven't answered your question, find someone in your region who's a mentor because they're out there. They're out yeah. there all over. Yeah. Um, find someone who's a mentor and find ask that question. I, I would say though. Jerry, oh, sorry. Uh, I, just, I, can, I can answer the question. Sure, sure. So typically you'll see CV in academia setting because you'll include your published research and who you did it with and what vein your focus is. All right. So uh, for those at home, Jerry uh, shared that a CV tends to be more for academia. So in that case, you're going to want to share uh, more specifics on what you've studied, things, research that you've done, papers that you've written, presentations that you've given. And it's going to be. In conferences, it's and it's going to be, be more than one or two pages. Yeah, yeah. But right? I also think that if you're talking CV and you're talking to a more international, obvious audience, be careful of your slang. Be careful of anything because you're talking to people that may not understand some of the words that we use here. You know, so, so if you're an American and you're searching for a job in Europe, or or if it's an international company and okay. they're having to deal with executive, I like right now I deal with a lot of customers that are international. I've got to choose my words very, very carefully. And I'd point back to use the job description. Here's a fun thing. Cybersecurity. How should cybersecurity be written out? Is there space? Is there no space? Is there a hyphen? <laughs> and the answer is what? It's one word based I, on the NIST 
I, I go off NIST. <laughs> I use what's in the job description. What's in the job description? Okay. I my read guidance. what the company calls it, and I will match their terminology. You're, you're correct within the context of a job search. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But that's not what you asked. I, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> fair, fair point. Good answers. Yeah. That kind of brings up an interesting question. Like, uh, we're in cybersecurity. We're really bad at job titles. Uh huh. Um, if if uh, all of us have the same job, there's probably uh, more than the number of us those titles. Yeah. Um, should we try to standardize on something or just like worry about what they're asking for? Or... Pick something. Repeat the so, question. Uh, there's a lot of job titles in cybersecurity. Um, so is there something that like we should focus on? Is there a specific thing that we should like, if my job title was this at the company, but like more commonly it's known as this, should I change that? And I'll, I'll give you sales engineer. So sales engineer, solutions, architect, solutions, architect, uh, systems engineer, like I have now learned like pre-sales, they all mean the exact same thing. It's the guy who's going to demo the actual tech to you. Um, and like, talk about like how this applies to your job. And, and I think that's like the five examples that I've found, but I hear that there's even more, mm -hmm. more ways of saying the same job, uh, network analyst, seam analyst, uh, intrusion analyst, like SOC analyst, like, do they all mean the same thing? And that's where the job description. What are they looking for? What do they call it? Why don't we call it that? If you're looking for a SOC position and you've been in a SOC position and they say uh, network analyst, were you a network analyst? Do you look like, like Zeke logs and firewall logs and stuff like that? Like they're looking for a network analyst. I was a network analyst. That's right. Yeah, Is that, that leads up to an interesting question? Because, sure. Uh, we've talked about how if they're interested in you, they're going to go to your LinkedIn. If you say, hey, like right now, I'm yeah, that should match. Engineer uh -huh. and, uh, and the job that I'm looking for is a network security engineer. And I say, right now I'm a network security engineer. And then they look at my LinkedIn and then my job title doesn't match. What's the resume that I gave? Them? I would say if it's job that you want, when you have your uh, resume ready, make your LinkedIn match it because yep. because yeah, if they're a company you want to work for, they're going to do their due diligence and they're going to bring up those questions in an interview. Yeah, make sure that you know it's reasonably similar to what HR has for your title or your organization because the background checks that you know the companies that they hire to do background checks Again. contact your company and they'll, basically they will tell you start date, end date, salary and bonus, and uh, title. Yeah. Again, don't lie. Yeah. Lying is the best way to make yourself not get a job. But you've or to got, get yourself but fired you've got fast. to get those keywords in there, right? Yeah. The job description is the single source of truth. If you wonder about anything, go back to the job description and see what they're looking at, right? And a great example of this is certifications, yeah. right? You see CEH a lot, right? But CEH, Certified Ethical Hacker, has a lot of marketing momentum. And maybe you don't have a CEH, but you've got, what's the EJPT one? Right. or PNPT. Right. And like, these are all like the pen test in there. So you don't have a CEH, you've got an equivalent. So what you do in your resume is you put your equivalent and then in parentheses, you put the CEH equivalent because you've got to get that keyword into your resume. Yeah, yeah so I mean, if, I, I have the GISP, the, the SANS equivalent of the CISSP. I always put that in there. Yep. Although I can't spell equivalent for the life of me, but yeah. that, that's, that's what spell checks for. But, but does that make sense is. about how you kind of like, you know, when there's inconsistencies, like this is what I was, but the job's looking for this, right? You have to try to make those equivalents, right? And get those keywords into your resume. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of job descriptions that men mention cert certifications, especially government jobs. Um, there's, there's DOD 8570 requirements. So uh, if, if you're looking for an 8570 job, have an 8570 certification, but if it's asking for a cert um, and it doesn't mention your cert, but you know, like Pentest Plus, GPEN, uh, EJPT, PNPT are at like that same level-ish entry-level penetration tester, like CEH, mention that it's what they're asking for equivalent. Yeah. And um, obviously, again, don't lie. <laughs> like if it's not uh, OSCE equivalent, then don't say that. Yeah, and then just a little bit on the uh, on the don't lie part. Um, you know, when you actually get into the interview, one of my favorite things to do is to look at your resume, turn it over, and then sit there and start asking questions about your resume, not even about the job or anything else. I just want to find out if you lied on your resume, right? I will ask you questions. You said you did this. Tell me about this. 
right? It may not have anything to do with the job. So here's something fun. I have got, uh, I put my YouTube on my resume and then I got to an interview and someone's like, so explain to me why you've got Gerald Dozier's stuff all over your YouTube. I was like, ah, <laughs> I do, don't I? <laughs> um, and I had to then explain that, uh, that I was hoping to like help share the, the shows. And so I linked up our restreams and that was then something I, I had to explain, be able to explain the things that are on your resume. Yeah. If you can't explain them, that's a quick way to like not ever get asked back. Yeah. Integrity is just such an important um, thing that we cannot teach that has to be present in the work that you do for us. And once the integrity question is um, answered as in this person does not have the integrity that's required, it's it. I don't care how much hard skills you have. I don't know how many awards you've won, patents, whatever, whatever, whatever. I cannot work with you. Yeah. And I think that's, that's again, the same reason why I ask you questions about your resume is so that I can figure out, are you lying to me? Because if you're lying to me now, you're definitely going to lie to me on the job. Yeah. yeah. Trust is a hard thing to earn back in the cybersecurity community. Well, I, I won't, I really probably won't try to rehabilitate a trust problem. I'll probably yeah. just go on to the next candidate. Yeah. Vivian Olive did a talk on this three years ago, right here over on the other stage, about you can be, that guy's awesome, or that person is, they're, they're all right, but don't be that guy. Yeah. Right? And that right there is a quick way to become that, that guy. guy. Yeah, don't, yeah. Be, don't be that person. So um, I'm going to repeat something from Neil Bridges, no word soup. So <laughs> having a lot of people like to have skills, and then they just put in Wireshark, and autopsy and NKs oh, and or, uh, Metasploit or Kali yeah. or Ubuntu. And do they just say all sorts of words? Don't do that. If they're asking in the job description for an example or for like experience with X, put that in your experience, either for your job, if you did it in your job, put in experience in your experience section, you can have a personal research section. That's not a lie. From like 2017 until now, I have done personal research and in there I have done try hack me rooms that cover this. I have mm -hmm. made videos that cover this. And truth be told, that's going to be more valuable than word soup showing that like you did things in your free time that you weren't getting paid for that apply to this job now. And you can ex put in there exactly how you did it in what applies to what I put in the job description. You've taken the time to focus and already tell me that you're an ideal candidate. Does that make sense? Is that, mm -hmm. would you agree? Yep. Yeah. Any, all right. Cause I know that can be, uh, some people might disagree on that one. So relevant experience. And we've, we've kind of covered this one, um, but the keywords for the job description go in your experience in those bullets. So oh, that's that why job, you have pictures of bullets. Yeah. They're bullet points. Okay, <laughs> they're bullets it. for your job. Relevant experience. Uh, <laughs> like what is yeah bullets bullets in your job uh, an example of non-relevance there <laughs> good job josh i was trying to get no that's people really, to wake that's up subtle i figured we might be a little ways into this that's and good. we might need something to be like Wait, what um something i uh, stole from neil bridges is what now so what now what so what did you do in that job so you maybe you responded to like five thousand alerts last year or in the last five years, maybe you responded to like a hundred alerts, something more reasonable. Okay, cool. What did that do? Did you then prevent so many breaches? Did you then provide this much coverage for like 20 clients uh, or keep your company of like 2000 from like getting uh, ransomware? And then what was the end result? Now what? Like, why did the company care? Why would your like CEO or your boss care about that? Now don't complete it. Because no, I have, don't lie. I have seen on a resume before where they're like, you know, installed patches, uh, keeping the organization from being broken into on three different or 3,000 computers and the total demise of the organization. Like, literally, a resume <laughs> alive. yeah. And if you've like, been wow, in the military, <laughs> OPR and EPR bullets, like, that's one thing. This is now real life. Um, we don't want to, like, yeah, conflate things. What you did, why it would matter. Um, like, why are you bringing it up? I did a thing. It fit the job description. Why did it matter at the time? And why would it matter to you? Yeah. In other words, I did this in the past. I can do this again for you. Exactly. Does that make sense? Cool. 
we've covered length. So one to two pages or, and have a backup of more in depth, yeah. just in case you get there. Any other questions about this? I think it's pretty cut and dry, right? Okay, cool. And then that's, that's the end of what I had preserved. Okay, presented. so those are the opening remarks. Hopefully that addresses a lot of what you came here to know about. Um, how do you, how are we gonna use the rest of the time this Okay, available? so raise your hand if, uh, actually, hmm. I like making people as awkward as I am. So if you brought a resume, stand up. If you brought a resume, stand up. If I've asked you or you're willing to review resumes, please find a person standing up and uh, gather people around who want to watch. And uh, I'm going to jump on with the people on Zoom who've sent in some resumes uh, so that they get some participation because they've paid a bit to be part of this virtually. Um, and uh, let's go over what they brought and give some feedback from your experience. Sound good? Does anyone need more guidance? Yes, sir. Okay, so we need a little bit more guidance. Okay, so, okay. Jerry, are you available to help do resume review? I can help for seven minutes. Okay, okay. cool. I can okay, so sweet. Can well, Aaron, can thank you. Too. Thank you, Aaron. I mean, I can do some resume review. Frank, yeah. Frank yep. can you do can some. do some resume review. Yes, okay. Some? Where do you want me, Josh? Do you want me on the virtual stuff too? or I'll cover me? virtual. Um, <laughs> Cause that, I feel like that can be more straightforward and I don't, I don't have the back and forth. So okay. I'll just give my, what I know of what rules I include. And then, um, <laughs> Frank, you want to, all right, people with resumes I'm, and pull some people you, in I'm open for business. <laughs> you want to help him? Okay, cool. Uh, you want to take plaid? Sorry. What's your name? What's your name? Yeah. Hunter. Hunter. Yeah, Frank's going to help you out. Who else brought a resume? You brought a resume? Do you want to connect? And then uh, if you want to listen to me, go over some stuff. I'll pull what I've got up here and share. Um, and then uh, you can listen to me or huddle around the people who are helping out. And I want to make sure everyone that brought a resume gets hands-on help. Anyone not? Can you hear me? Cool. Sorry, Brian. I got to admit, I asked people to send them in cleared off. <laughs> I tried to sanitize as much as I could. Sorry about that. I also kind of doxed myself, so at least we're in this together. Sorry, bro. Uh -huh. <laughs> at least it's only the participants here, not live on the internet. Um, so Brian, you're listening. Sweet. Uh, uh, and sorry about that. I, I had no idea how to do that better. Um, but in the future. Okay. So summary, you've, um, I'm going to go through some high points. So good. You got your information. Uh, it's in a straightforward manner. Um, I would say you don't need this on the second page. You've already got it covered on the first page. So you don't need this header up here. Um, so that's the overall, um, I would also try to see if you could, uh, it looks like you've already put some effort into getting a custom LinkedIn URL. Anyone who's not sure how to do that, go to your profile, go to like public view of your profile. And then there's a setting in there. Um, shoot. I'll just, since we're all here anyways, I'll just show you how to do that. Since we're, since we're over sharing, I'll just go into it. So up here, edit public profile and URL. And then from there, you can edit your custom URL. So highly recommend put something in there that fits. And maybe Brian Mitchell 1990 works well because I, probably just like Josh Mason, it's a common name. So that's cool. So summary, what job are you looking for? You said that you were looking for this tier one stock analyst with cyber. So I'll pop back and forth between those. Actually, we'll see how Google Docs dorks this up. So I'm going to start with the job description. They're looking for a tier one SOC analyst. They talk about it's cyber reason, defend it all, cybersecurity solutions, continually see monitor attackers by analyzing data, right? You're going to perform ongoing security analysts, solve security incidents, address clients, inquiries via phone and email. So I'm looking for some transferable skills before I even get into your thing. If you've worked with clients via phone and email, like that's something you'd want to highlight, especially 
depending on the strength of your resume. We're closely with the uh, customer success and sales team. So have you worked with either of those before? Understanding of networks, good understanding of networks. Okay, let's come back to that. Good command of operating systems. And it mentions some here. It mentions some. So we'll come back and pull that in. Uh, familiarity with malware techniques and attack techniques. And they've mentioned several. We might want to come back. S experience with sys internals, detail oriented to the ability to work both individually and within a team. This is a soft skill and like a give me of like, ooh, this is one of those things that I'm going to put in my summary. Um, because have I done that? Yeah, I'm detail oriented and I have the ability to work with individuals within a team. They put it in the job resume. I'm going to say that that's me. I'm uh, great interpersonal skills with a service oriented touch. If you've got examples of it that you can put in your job experience, solid, go for it. Strong advantage if you've got experience in the following. So if you've done malware analysis, threat intelligence, et cetera, et cetera, um, it talks about different tools. If we mention those tools in our experience later, awesome. And then who we are, then we start looking at their core values. This is going to be useful. If you fit their core values, if you're already the sort of person that they want in their environment, then maybe they won't care about some of the other things. Um, because if you aren't, if you aren't hundred percent fit, you might still be the right person. You might still be the best choice. I know sometimes I go out on Amazon and I buy something and it's not exactly what I'm looking for, but it's close enough. So we win as one, ever evolving. We can't change gifts is at the forefront. Never give up. UBU, awesome. And then it even says here, if you don't meet every single requirement, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Good. All right. So knowing that, let's now look at your resume. So high standards of integrity and professionalism, cool, strong time management, quick to learn, excellent interpersonal ability to work individually and as a dedicated team member, and ability to work with people from diverse cultures and backgrounds. What I would do is, um, and then I'll look, operating system certificates, uh, experience. You were an analyst as an intern this year. Uh, you were a lab manager for a couple years. Um, so this isn't a lie. You were a cybersecurity, uh, cybersecurity professional. So and then let's see how do they spell cybersecurity cyber are there any examples no there's no examples i would go with one word uh cybersecurity professional with experience and you were uh here's the great thing you were um a cybersecurity analyst did you work directly with customers? Um, <laughs> updated phishing emails, maximize investments, cool. Assisted students and faculty to identify. Sweet. So let's go look at some of the things that they asked about. With great interpersonal, I just gotta steal right out of here. And I'll, we'll clean up formatting in a second. Great interpersonal skills. Uh, and do you have familiarity with those methods? Yeah. You work for Cyber Reason as an intern. I'm just, they asked for it. Um, the ability to work in a team, like they're asking for these things. Do you have these things? Yeah. So we're not lying at all. Right? Feel free to disagree with me if you want. Um, and then where did it ask about working with there? And experience. Boom. And we could go through here and change some things so that it fits. You have just gotten a bunch of, yeah. Did they turn the Wi-Fi back on? Uh, the hotel Wi-Fi is on, okay. but not the room-specific Wi-Fi okay. for their hotspot. We, have the, we had a list for the room. Uh, yeah, this one, this one's gone. Okay. So. Yeah. Now I know why. Yeah. Here it is. Is that the? This is the workshop. Is that one still there? I don't think so. I think they're gone. 
Uh, here, but but that one is that top one. The top one is yeah. Okay. So we were able to pull a bunch of stuff in there, and then um, we could even talk about experience with, and they talked about like modern operating systems because it sounds like you've got that. <laughs> have you worked with any of these tools i would maybe bring in one or two that they're asking about that you have in here like you've got operating systems so like boom let's mention that there uh networking we can talk about that um experience with modern operating systems knowledge of networking because they asked about that and then we don't have to mention it here and then do, 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 do. then we can go through and find out some more of your specifics that fit and we can apply. It's like two sentences, it's thorough, and it's done. I would then get rid of expertise and competencies. And this is this is word soup. This is stuff I hate. Um, yeah, use system journals, uh, networking, and direct experience. <laughs> system with system journals. If I could type, hey, live typing. So there you go. You uh, add in a little more, but shoot, that's pretty. That's pretty helpful right there. Um, certifications. This again could be useful, but let's see. What do they ask for? Um, do they ask for any specific certs? This. Edmonds College. You can just keep it in there like that. But again, let's move all this. Am I still talking? Can you still me? Okay. Um, let's move it to the back. Let's move this current experience, stuff that you've done being paid or at least as an intern up right after your summary. Again, using that newspaper um, article like foundation. And then in here, this is a lot. Um, I don't like reading a lot. Uh, I skim things. I don't even read full books anymore. I just like skim, highlight, look for words, move on. Is there anything useful in the plot? And that's why I listen to audio books. But um, if you've got two minutes to look at this whole thing, then uh, they're going to move quickly too. So what made sense? Cybersecurity analyst, sick, as an intern, awesome. Then let's, uh, I what I like for a format is um, let's move this down there. And this is just me. Um, you can keep remote. And then let's pull this and put it like. Let's put it like that. So, cybersecurity analyst from uh, no problem. From March of this year to now. So, and you could do a four or you could just do March, April. That's a four. And then in here, let's go with uh, you don't need, and I know you gave it to me in a PDF. I put it in Google Docs. It messed up these bullets. That's fine. But then let's look at like what the bullets say. So, analyze and collaborated over 20 live. <laughs> Cool. That made sense. But uh, what you did, so what, now what? Does this apply to the job that they're asking you about? So in this job, you're going to be a SOC analyst looking for, um, did you malware analysis? So you analyzed attack artifacts. So you analyzed. So you did uh, both malware analysis, threat hunting, and maybe in, like versions of this. Let's use their words, pull it into here, and then like, what was the impact? Why does it matter? So like, twenty live, awesome. Is that a lot? Is that a little? Like for how many clients? Um, and then is that? Did that matter to your organization? Like, was it uh, a high amount? Was it? Oh man. What was the overall impact? Did you prevent incidents with that? And again, don't lie, don't over exaggerate, uh, be straightforward. But this is a really long sentence for like something that like I may or may not care about. 
it didn't ask about Bitrat or Verilor or Smoke lo Loader. So that's like, it's cool that you did it, but like they gave you tools right here that they care about. If it's not that, then like, uh, I don't know if this is helpful. And you did there, live cyber threat hunting. So you did threat hunting. You did threat hunting. Um, and then let's talk about like, for how many uh, attacks? It sounds like 20 attacks. So live cyber threat hunting for 20 attacks, protecting blank number. And I'll try to join you on the live stream soon. Uh, where are you going to be? Okay, sweet. Um, so that's what I would do. Live cyber threat hunting on uh, 20 uh, for 20 attacks, uh, impacting how many companies? that might be or for a company of what size that's what i would put there that's how i would turn that bullet and it's gonna be a much smaller bullet but it's gonna be impactful to what they care about and if you used some of Am I coming out through the room now? Okay. Cool. Are you guys following along? Do I need to speak to you too? <laughs> okay. Um, for an internship post, let's see. What does this say? Updated a phishing email training material. Does that apply? Um, it can apply because you worked, it sounds like you probably address client inquiries or maybe you worked alongside a customer success or sales team with that. If you did, that's what I would bring in. I think that's an opportunity to, uh, to mention things. Yeah. Matt Lee has a killer beard. If I could stand it, I would try to grow a beard like that, but I, I don't like it. <clears throat> Create a white paper presenting offerings. This is long. And for someone like me, this takes a long time to read. Uh, let's trim this down to the simplest. So you did some case studies. You did some research. Are they looking for having done research? If so, bring it in based off of what they're looking at. So you did maybe some threat intelligence or... Um, with that and again if it doesn't apply we can skip it I know you did a cool thing that's awesome keep it in mind save it for your biography but if it doesn't apply here we can move on and that's fine because truth be told we can get back to some of these things that you might have done in labs if you used they mentioned tools here so if you've done uh, volatility on TriHackMe. If you've uh, worked with Metasploit and Wireshark on TriHackMe or GitHub or uh, not GitHub, um, Hack the Box or any of those others, that's a great place to bring these in. You use Sys internals. Let's have a bullet talking about what you did with Sys internals. What did you find? Uh, how many attacks did you mitigate or like investigate with that? Okay. Yeah. Anyone else want some hands-on help? Did you bring, uh, you guys both got yours looked at? And feel free to, if someone else is free, grab someone, you get feedback. But, okay. As lab manager, okay, again, you assisted students, truth be told, I would keep that in there. Assisted students and faculty. And then truth be told, I like this only because it, it talks about working with people. Um, I would add maybe, maybe take out the technical problems. This is unnecessary um, for an organization of X size uh, and Y students. That's what I would do there. It shows how impactful it is. Like how many people did you help? Because they don't care what you helped with. Right here, they actually asked if you could address client inquiries via phone and email. So, and whether you had a strong troubleshooting and problem solving skills. So like both of those get shown right there in assisting students with technical problems. Uh, this seems 
redundant to the others. Um, and it's kind of repeats of the same stuff and that's fine then what i would get into is uh this is fine for your education what you're covering uh, i would put your higher education up even though it's earlier bachelor's and then associate i don't know i don't think it really matters um this shows that you are doing something recent for cybersecurity. And that's cool um and then I would take the opportunity to then share personal stuff that you've done, labbing or uh, personal research, put that as um, experience and put it for uh, self-study for the time frame that you did it and applicable stuff covering exactly what they're asking for. If you've studied Python, you've built uh, things with C++, uh, you've worked with assembly before, this is an opportunity to mention that and show that you know it in you're in bullets that they can read like, yeah. Oh, Hey, I've built out a lab that did this. I've done capsule flags and did this. I've done these rooms on try hack me and Hackbox where I did this, this, and this, and where I have experience with these things. That's where I would show off that. So yeah. And that's kind of my take, Brian, anything else, uh, any questions you have? You kind of got me here. And also, I'm sorry again. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome, Brian. All right. I got, yeah, I got another one in here. So sorry if I shared too much stuff. Thomas. Seeking a position as a pen tester, network or web app, security engineer. All right, then I'm going to go to LinkedIn and find a job description. Yeah. Uh, Duster. Let's go with that one. One to two years of experience, entry level understanding. Oh man, I kind of. Okay. Uh, where is this at? In DC. This is cool. All right, let's work with this. So where was? Put it over here. What I call it? M A Hearts. I'm gonna move it over to Google Docs. See how much it messes up your PDF. There you go. Ah. Sorry. <laughs> okay. So you got a cover letter, and then a resume. Please, no one pay attention. If someone else wants to send me something, it's uh, resumes. Resumes at noobvillage.org, and I can overshare your information with everyone else participating as well. So, and I'll put it in here. <laughs> awesome. So if you want to send me stuff, we'll work through whatever we've got. Thomas, are you here? Yeah. 
Thank you guys for coming for anyone who's got to bounce out. Thank you for coming and helping out. I really appreciate it. If people like this, then I'll try to build it up more. Uh, it's I'm, I'm at my like level one or like zero for maturity. So going to get this more. I'm ad hoc right now. And that at the bottom of that pyramid that Alyssa had. <laughs> but Ken, thank you so much. And it's so great to see you. Are you going to be around after the dinner? Uh, I don't know. It's at six. Are you staying around tonight? Yeah. yeah. All right, cool. Then I, I, I want to try to hang out with everyone tonight. Yeah. We're, like, we're not leaving until like after John and Emily gets done speaking. Sick. So as soon as he's done, we got to bounce because we got to try the Super Bowls. Sounds good. But yeah. this one will be here. Rock on. Go rock. So I don't know if Thomas is in here, but we will work with. Any of you all paying attention? Anyways, get good stuff out of it. Yeah, no worries. All right, peace out, Jim. man. And I'll work with uh, this job that I found. It's simple. Uh, yeah, that's exactly my. That's exactly where we're going, going the other direction with that same data. Same yeah, conversation. Sure. Yeah. Here's a GDIT. All right, this is going to be for a government job. It's looking for poly. Mm, it's probably fine. Stuff's also going to look at uh, DC because that's where my locality is set. So I like overall y your stuff flows um, fine. You don't have columns, you don't have any weird tables. Uh, and I know that it got mangled when I turned it into Google Doc. So forgive me for that. Uh, I like your... Man, we didn't even talk about uh, letters. They can help, especially if you want to spell out more stuff that's not covered in your resume. But they're not as required nowadays. You are an adaptive experienced professional seeking to fill a web app pen tester position. Okay. Some word soup. Yeah. 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 Just in case anyone was in here and just wanted to follow along. I know I'm not speaking loudly so that people can, but yeah, I tried to go quickly and de docs. <laughs> The uh, recording from way west uh, isn't out there because I, I left someone's resume up there for like a, a lot longer than I am happy with. Yeah, I was. Yeah. Thank you so much, you rock man. So this one, it's a. Uh, it's not very specific. It's not tied to the the job they're looking for. They are saying like seeking a web app pen tester. What are you doing now? You've done a lot of training. What's your experience? A lot of self-study. You worked with cloud services. Sorry, trying to understand. So hmm, this is hard. Uh, what's really helpful is if you put the company and then the role. And then the time frame. And again, this got mangled. But even here, okay. Cybersecurity self study, study from 2020. You did cloud services for a couple months per company. I would say what company and then the role. The, uh, this is fine. I'd put the company and then the co founder. And then co -founder. Uh, these are just things that people are used to seeing. Company and then the information. And again, this is now you've got a bunch of stuff, which is really cool. I want to ask you about, but I don't know if it necessarily applies to the job that we're, uh, that you're targeting. So like if you have something in there that is a transferable skill, let's bring that in, let's highlight it. But uh, otherwise it doesn't need to take up this much space. And instead we could probably make your self-study um, more helpful. So let's go back to a job. So this one, it's GDIT looking for a cybersecurity 
in D.C. for the government or in Virginia. But let's just look at what they're asking for. Conduct internal penetration tests, manual exploit, examine web and operating system scanners, um, examine the results for uh, code analysis, vulnerabilities, misconfigurations, and compliance issues. Okay, that's some like words right there that we want to use. Write final reports, defend findings, mitigation strategies, and references. Ability to meet and coordinate with various audiences, including developers, sys administrators, project managers, and thank you, Kip, and stakeholders. Hey, Rockman. Uh, Frank? I think your phone's ringing. And then provide recommendations, write pen testing, rules of engagement, conduct security reviews. And then this one's looking for a lot of experience. Uh, let's see if we can find like a junior penetration tester. Oh, that's right. Junior. Hybrid, it's in green belt. I just want to say, like, uh, I just want to do that eventually. Just drop my book so, here. So, this one's again the same plan, communicate, coordinate, and perform pen tests, simulate attacks, develop automation scripts, document targets, perform information research, uh, develop SOPs, and occasionally travel. And then looking for experience, here's some tools, uh, methodologies, some stuff, here's some more tools, experience with seams, experience here. All right, these are things that we can then pull in. And here's some certs, awesome. There's a required cert, it looks like 8570 is what they're look targeting. So now let's look at what you've got. So you have do, 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 do. you are a hmm, I don't know how to present myself. Aspiring well, aspiring web app pen tester. And some people hate aspiring, so you can just get rid of aspiring if you. Uh, have been doing this stuff and self research. If you're a never been paid yet bug bounty hunter um, and you're doing stuff and you can talk about things that you've looked for, but you haven't been paid, especially if you've turned in bug bounties. If you want to be a web app pen tester, you can do that freelance already. And you should be able to talk about that and to have it as experience. If you haven't, go start doing it. So in here, do, 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 do. Let's just steal some things with the ability to plan, communicate, and coordinate uh, with stakeholders. Um, and then uh, oops, my battery's gonna die on me soon. Experienced in, and then let's list the tools, um, tools and things mentioned in the job description. And I'm not gonna copy them all here. That's what I would put as like the second sentence. And I didn't bring my I think that's fine. We got a few more minutes left. I hope it will last. Ooh. Anyone got a uh, a laptop charger that's USB C? That I could borrow for like ten minutes. <laughs> Like, oh, you know what? Here's mine. I did bring my backpack. I was like, did I bring my backpack? I was, yeah, I got one. I got one. I'm so sorry. I mean, an idiot. Thank you. Appreciate your willingness to help.
Yeah. You rock. Was this helpful? Feel free to send me any feedback you got. Yeah. Thanks so much. Yeah. <laughs> me too until i got the house <laughs> yeah i'm so glad thanks sir you're welcome uh, don't be a stranger thank you Got your name right now. Yeah. And, uh, I'm a good sales engineer. I, uh, I do. Awesome. Hit me up. Thank you. If you ever got any questions? Sounds good. I'm also on LinkedIn and I, uh, yeah. I take all the questions people send me <laughs> and answer them best I can. Yeah. See you, man. And for you guys at home, uh, my info is in the LinkedIn channel. Uh, feel free to reach out, connect, um, and ask questions. I'm glad to help. I might not have bandwidth to do this like all the time, but uh, I will do what I can. I will answer every question. So good qualifications. This is like word soup. I don't like this. You can pull this in to job experience, especially since you have self-study included in there. I would put the certifications at the end because let's it's like notes at the end of an article that's that's fine that's perfectly fine and it works with the length but like start hook pull um and show them that like you're a good fit showing that you've done a bunch of certifications like ah, i don't know that i want to continue reading same with tools this is kind of again word soup this is our these are tools that they talked about oh it looks like it did columns i don't know if you've actually got columns in there no but uh Again, it's word soup. Certifications at the end and these tools and key qualifications, let's talk about them in here. Specific to this job description. And that's, that's yeah, going to be my big takeaway. Uh, you talk about a lot of things. If you did a try hack me room or many try hack me rooms where you use these tools that they mentioned, then let's mention that using the tools, uh, including Metasploit and MapMenesis, Burpsuite, Cobalt Strike, have completed and trained and practiced these things. So let's mention it like that. Use their their words and include that. Uh, some of this stuff. If you don't have transferable skills, which you probably do, especially in a lot of these soft skills, then let's skip it. And if it's older than 10 years, we may not even want to mention it. I would also put, hmm, well, this is kind of cool. Though I don't know that it applies. <laughs> I would maybe not include those special interests. Yeah, I would recommend you not. It, it's not really needed. Um, cool. I don't know if Thomas is listening at home. If he's not... And that's fine. Um, if anyone else wants to send me the resume before we're all done, we can do that. Otherwise, we're probably going to end kind of early. Anyone got anything for me? Last questions while you've got my undivided attention. Okay. Well, you guys all rock. And I think we're going to call that the workshop. Thank you. If anyone is still watching. <laughs>